Hello everybody and welcome back live here to the Sim Raceway Sunday race off from Sonoma. It's going to be another entertaining race in store for you. This time though with the Formula 3 cars. So a new addition to the Sunday race off. There's been quite some time before they've made their return. These monster 300 horsepower Formula 3 cars. We're going to be providing some interesting racing to say the least today. They're quite a handful having driven them myself. They really do take mastery in order to get anywhere with them. They take a lot of, I think the best way to describe them is that they're a bit like the TARDIS from Doctor Who. They're quite deceiving. They look very gentle on the outside. They're like, oh, look, it's a baby Formula One car. Bang, you put your foot down and they're away. They get to 0 to 60 miles an hour in just 2.7 seconds. So these cars are really lightning quick. They're so agile, so nimble, and that's what makes them so difficult to control. My name's Ian Jenkins. I'll be bringing you all of the action for you for this race and for all of the races tonight. So let's bring you the rest of this qualifying session and so no qualifying times are in just this moment yet. The majority of drivers still trying to set their very first lap of the afternoon and there it is, the first lap. So a 135.503 is the benchmark time of the afternoon. That is set by Daniel C. We've got engaged yet in second place and that's just been beaten by Luke Sky. So Luke Sky's not content there with joining the Evo race. He wants to try his luck with the Formula 3s as well and it's very, very interesting to just see what these cars can produce because I think everyone's aware just how deadly they can be. Everyone's aware how much you need to push to drive them. But when you look at an onboard camera and they're going through that fast downhill section, they're flying through turn number one and two. It's scary to watch them even at such lightning pace. And I think that really is going to be 
quite the key as these drivers try and get the maximum out of their cars. Let's see what they can do though, as time's surely about to wear on a bit quicker than we first imagined. As there's Boussef off into the background. So a quick rundown of the qualifying order in the opening five minutes or so. It's Daniel C currently first. We've got now it's Key in second. Third place there for Luke Sky. Fourth for Boussef. Fifth place for Engage. Sixth for Linus. Brainor in seventh. Again another return there. VKS in eighth place. And they round out our runners for the moment. So just as well. Eight laps here today. So running the full Sonoma layout. A time of a roughly about a 1 minute 37. You're looking at on average for a lap time so the race gonna probably be around 20 minutes long we you know between 10 and 15 minutes so still quite a tough task for these formula 3 cars today and with the track is demanding as Sonoma it's not just the driver that will have the mental and physical toll these cars will as well of course that rear wheel drive which doesn't really suit this sort of circuit meaning they're gonna find themselves in some quite tricky predicaments a bit later on but again as we said only time will tell as to how much of a toll it's going to take on them. So we're just waiting for the final few times to be set then as the session really does start to always oh, draw to a close now. And off goes our current policy to Daniel C. Pirouetting. And just like that, it happens to the best of us, it happens to the rest of us. And well, I think Daniel C's found that out for himself here today. Four minutes left to go. He still finds himself at the top of the time sheet, however. And just try and see the difference actually, it's a, quite a broad difference between the current pole time and the man in 8th position. So we've got a good 3 seconds separating everyone at the moment, so still obviously plenty of time to get that all important lap in. But it's an interesting fact for you that I've just remembered. So we said earlier how quick these cars are, and you know, they're baby you know, cars, Formula 3 cars run by the juniors who are destined to try and make their way to the top of the IndyCar or open wheel scene. And they can hit 0 to 60 in 2.7 seconds. An Indy car hits it in 2 seconds. And that car has 500 more brake horsepower. So there really isn't that much between them. Just 0.7 of a second to get to 0 to 60. And obviously the top speed is dramatically different. You've got 181 for the Formula 3 and 220 for the Indy car. So a massive difference there. But off the line, there's not that much between them. These little beasts are rapid. Making them such little terrors to contain. Daniel still fastest at the moment though by three tenths of a second. He's then 1.4 in front of Luke Sky. But if qualifying's anything to go by, he won't have it all his own way. You know, we saw this in Evo race as well. It's not guaranteed you'll get a victory. Uh, however, the first race of tonight was won from the pole. But we'll see if that trend continues on as we enter the final three minutes of this qualifying session. As we take a look a bit further down the field, then let's see the man in P5 in Garnish at the moment. Just notice his driving style there, it's a lot neater than that of now it's Key, who's just currently topping the timesheet at the moment, pipping our previous pole sitter. And in Garnish has got one of those driving styles where he does take the extra curbing. He will, you know, drift the car to the outside that extra millimetre or so to get the more traction put down. However, he's got a much tidier exit to the corner. His entrance is always very frisky, his entrance is as tiny as you'll ever see it and that is what's making him a very competitive driver here today we'll see if he can continue that form into the race but currently sitting inside the top five is where most drivers want to be the so daniel c still five tenths quicker now he's retaking it so wow already by five tenths of a second there and just like that this series again goes, turns around on its head.
And now he's got to try and keep an eye on what Luke Sky's doing as well. He's obviously feeling a lot more comfortable inside the Formula 3 car than he was the Evo. And here he's currently positioned in third to line up on the grid. Just two seconds away from Daniel C at the moment. Third place is not a bad effort at all there by Luke Sky to be fresh off of a 10 lap sprint around the Sonoma circuit to be back into a Formula 3 car and do another 10 laps plus qualifying. It's a very difficult task to do. Two very different cars, two very different driving styles, um, two very different outcomes as well. Luke Sky proving to be a lot more successful in the Formula 3 during this qualifying session. If he can continue that during the race, he will be a much envied prospect of the future as he comes through the final turn then. Let's see if he can improve his time as we enter the final stage now. And across the line, he doesn't improve, still 1.6, so he does improve actually. Only 1.6 away now from Daniel C. So qualifying has come to a close and the chequered flags are waving. Let's just wait and see what the following drivers have to offer then. Are we going to see any late shocks? Funny enough, it's the man who's done the most laps. He's at the top of the time sheet right now. Seven laps completed for Daniel C and he's the only man inside a 134. So we'll see what he can do a bit later on. As he is actually about to come to a close. You've got Narek's key provisionally second. Still on a bit of a change place right at the very end there. Crash HMS crosses in P7, was previously 8th, so a jump of 1 there for Crash. You went off track. The lap won't count. So now just trying to wait on the final few drivers to cross the start finish line and bring an end to this jubilant qualifying session and what it has been for Daniel C. 134.9 puts himself in a very, very good position to convert that into a victory. We'll wait and see how successful he is in that bid. But right now it is looking like the odds are definitely in his favour. So that is the end of the qualifying session. Go get yourself some snacks. We'll be back in just a moment with the full race. Okay, so we're back then for eight laps here around the Sonoma Raceway. It's going to be Daniel C lining up on the pole. Now it's key second, Luke in third, and Garn in P4 looking strong on the second row. Beats it rounds out your top five, crashing six. 
But we have a total of eight well nine runners. We've got four red lights now, and now we have oh, yeah, Racing yeah. Sonoma once again. And again, a poor start there from now is key. He's going there to move to the inside. There may be a bit of contact, but he's barely left enough room there by Bahita. But he's going to have to struggle around the outside of turn number two. There's all kinds of contact there, and somehow all drivers come out on scape. That was incredible stuff there to keep control of a Formula Three car alone is a task in itself. Let alone when you're being slammed into by another car. Look at the SF now, they're trying to catch again through the downhill section. Needs to be so careful right about now though. So I need up number one and these drivers trying to give it all already. Now I've seen what Daniel can do is qualifying and what is one lap pace is like. What's he like over a distance? We've got Luke's guys really not that far away. The rest of the field starting to trail. A bit of side-by-side -side action though going on right back there oh, who, who was that between i think it may have been a brain or indeed it was that was passing crash hmf into the final few turns we've got obviously a couple of more corners to come as daniel c comes towards the end of lap number one into the final couple of corners through the chicane he comes and he's looking a much stronger than lolin fox was when he took the pole and led the first lap 1.9 or 3.2 seconds is calculated through the second sector and the gap with Olin Fox barely left two seconds. So in Garn has got himself a mighty task on his hands if he wants to win this race. Or more importantly, if he wants to defend second. All those cars are not very far away at all. But already, Luke Sky is down to ninth. And Daniel C has got ten seconds on him already. Oh, and a spin there for Bellina. So he somehow corrects the slide. But through the final turn, that could have been deadly. Luke Sky says thank you very much. And moves through to take the position. And now watch Bellinas, he needs to try and come back, but all the actions there side by side with Crash again. And Brainor, those guys have been battling non-stop this afternoon and they really can't get enough of the action. On a spin in the background now, it's VKSA, he's come off the elevation change at a wrong angle and again that's the same corner I believe where Daniel C must have spanned in qualifying. So if that's proven an issue for these Formula 3 cars, I wonder what it's going to do to the Indy cars. There's only one way to find out as the IndyCar drivers in, uh, well, endeavour on an 85 lap event around the Sonoma Raceway virtual race of what you're about to see at 9.30 or 10.30 Eastern Time I believe so you really don't want to go anywhere for that. It's going to be a truly tremendous race again. We'll keep you up to date on all the goings on around the IndyCar race a bit later on. Who's on pole? Who's second? Who's maybe an underdog to take a victory? And of course, who's maybe going to be the man coming out on top leading the championship? But in terms of what we're seeing in front of us right now, there's only one man who's ideally leading in front, and that's going to be Daniel C. Six seconds after just two laps of racing, he crosses the line to start lap number three, and he's just shown no sign of remorse, no sign of looking back. He's taken the lead, he's had a good start. It helped that the man in second place, now is key, didn't get off to the best of starts, but even so, whatever way you look at it, it's been a great dominant first stint for Daniel C. We'll be looking to continue that as the race wears on. And a bit of a lock-up there. That's not going to affect him too much, I don't think. Now, I'll be able to carry on. Daniel C is still not showing any sign of letting up right now. 6.9, it's gone up again. Any battles a bit further down the field, it's all pretty much singled out for the moment. But they do need to start being a bit more careful. And now his key's gone very wide through there. Luckily, there was a lot of time out to make up for the error, but... That could have been crucial to his race if he'd have messed that up. That could have been pretty much the end of it. If, these, if you lose these cars at high speeds, you've got to find yourself engulfed in a tie barrier, that or a cloud of smoke. As a bit further up the field, our race leader extends his lead to eight seconds as he comes towards the end here of lap number three out of the eight. So approaching the halfway mark again. And he's really driving this Formula 3 car ragged right now. He's in the fifth gear, the highest of the sequential gearbox as he comes through the final, to uh, final turn. Gets himself nice and lined up there. And this is, of course, known as the most advanced open-wheel trainer in the world. And 
start to find out why all you've got to do is really look at what you're seeing right now a great job by Dan you'll see it separating the men from the boys it's teaching you how to race open wheelers and with the sheer pace as well and a big wiggle there that was by Crash HMF who has come off worse it seems in the battle with Brenor he's now lost quite a bit of time well 0.7 seconds he's barely in front of VKS8 that's a trio you want to watch I reckon in the second half of this race those three drivers going tooth and nail I think So they've all got to be extremely careful right now and a big moment again there by Crash. He's really overdriving this Formula 3 car right now, that is for sure, there's no doubt about it. He's putting it through his paces and he needs to try and catch Brunor. He's feeling that pressure. Big cloud of smoke there from Brunor's rear tyre, so rear wheel drive. As we say, he's throwing up a lot of smoke, a lot of uh, lock-up smoke there and the smell of burning rubber is going to be very fresh around the Sonoma or actually the owner's Infineon Raceway. As they now go into, oh, and a big move again by Crash. He almost went for that. And then I think he realised he would outbreak himself and possibly hit Brunor. So had to literally skip over the curb to avoid contact. But he is getting closer. He's gained a tenth of a second in the first sector alone. Doesn't sound like a lot when you put it in racing terms. A tenth of a second is the difference between winning and losing. And VKS hits the back of Crash, who barely holds on to his car. And that, I'm sure it's going to be a protest at the end of the race or some fists flying at home right now. Crash will not be happy with that as he gets smouldered by VKS and he hasn't lost that much time. I don't think it's worthy of a penalty. I think he just missed his braking spot. And these Lola powered Formula 3 cars are really putting Sonoma. They're warming up the tarmac for the IndyCars a bit later on and Brunor goes wide, the first mistake we've seen him making quite some time and Crash follows and now VKS goes through. So VKS has gone, okay, right, I'll capitalise on that, thank you very much. I'm going to try and catch uh, Brunor and we've just quite figured out there that VKS has had a warning for what's happened with the incident earlier on. So he hasn't gone off completely lightly for those of you who believe it was his fault. He has received a very stern warning from our race administrator and now Luke Sky, whilst he's pushed his way back through the field, remember of course he's right at the back after lap number one, he was in a bit of an incident, he's pushed himself back through and now finds himself in P5, they're being caught by Brunor and by VKS, those three getting very close, VKS going wide, got to be careful not to lose that there. And now, again, a big lock-up and almost a mirror of what we saw at the very same corner as well. VKS is going very hot and very late into that chicane. And as they come through the final turn, once again, to start lap number six of the eight here at Sonoma. It's been a dominant start from Daniel. And you've got to wonder, he started from pole position, as did Lolin Fox, as he got a win from pole position. Or to be in his favour right now if you were to bet on this, so I think he'll probably lose money. He's 13.8 seconds away from Engange at the moment. So really, put the hammer down, he's got no one in his sights. He's even got a little bit of comfort room to make a mistake if he so gets it. And as we just take a look at what Daniel is doing right now, he's 14 seconds, so he's increased even further. Engages a yellow flag, and that is for now it's key. He's down to P4, and what has happened there? I think there must have been contact with Luke at some point down the line. VKS and Brunor are not that far away. Well, Brunor and Crash are now 7th and 8th, so a total reshuffle of the field here. What has happened there? That has puzzled me quite a lot and you can see already the effect it's had. Now it's key, still P4 was really a hot favourite, he started in P2, he had a bad start. And yes, yeah, so we've just been confirmed there was contact with Maris Key and Bohisha and it's going to be 
Well, Zifi moves up into P3, 1.4 seconds in front as they start lap number seven of the eight given to us. Let's just try and keep an eye on what all the drivers are doing then as we start this penultimate lap. Make sure there's no late twists of fate around Sonoma. I think right now Daniel C has got this under control. It's just second after second after second, lap after lap after lap. He's just obliterated this field today. 16.9 seconds. I don't want to uh, speak too soon, but I do think that right towards the end of this event, Daniel C is going to be saying there's another yellow flag. Now, that is a car just up in front. Who is that? I'm presuming that is Bellinas. So, Bellinas has had another spin from P9. And that's, well, unfortunately, probably going to damage his race a lot more than they should have done. Was there an incident with Crash? I don't believe there was. And Renault is still very close together. And look at now, it's key now. We said he wants that position back, and he's already made his intentions very clear into this final lap and a quarter or so. They're fielding through the final corner now, and Key is looking a lot stronger. He's got to be said, he's got his new fire inside in the back end, wanting to step out. You could almost feel it. You could almost hear it stepping out and out of the final corner. It almost did just that. But Hesef is now is the in the lap. need of that Keep battle. Going. One lap to go. 21 seconds behind Daniel, and look how deep he's gone. I think he's hitting, but Hesef goes off. And I'm speechless at that. That should be a penalty, or at least has to get the position back. Was that ghost contact, or was that a full-on hit? I think Beezer may have just gone wide, in all honesty. We'll have to try and figure out the verdict. We've not got long left to do it, either. All the battles coming to an end as Brunor goes a bit wide and crash now from P8. Looks in a much more attacking position. That could be the event he needed. We'll try and keep an eye on that as well. As this battle comes to an end, Brunor needs a faultless race right now. And Bellinas reverses off the track. Daniel takes his time. He's got time to. He lost two seconds. But hey, what's two seconds when you've got a further 19 in front of you? Daniel C is going to come through these last couple of corners as a winner of the Sim Raceway Sunday race off. He was dominant in qualifying. And he's dominant here today. He's going to cross the start finish line. A winner here at Sonoma. It's been a tremendous start and a tremendous finish. Daniel C wins the Formula 3 race for week 39. So now our intentions turn to engage in P2. He's going to come across the line now. Very, very solid performance. Well done there to engage. He's deserved that so much. He crosses the start finish line and he really does deserve such a charismatic end to the race. Buzzif was asked to give it back. Well, now, now it's Kiel making pardon. Gave the position back in the end after the hit. So it's going to be Behizef that takes P3. Now it's Key fourth. Luke's guy finishes in style in P5 after a great recovery drive. VKS8 P6. Seventh Renault. Eighth is Crash. Ninth Bellinas. And that will round out our entire field for this race. So thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. But now the main event is upon us. 85 laps of the Sonoma Raceway is about to unfold. The IndyCar from 2012 is coming out just before the real IndyCar race a bit later on. So think of this as almost like a little